Why do you think NVIDIA has, switch aside, checked out of console hardware? Interesting question, right, Joe? Why do you think they have? And do you think it's going to remain mm, the case? It's tough to say. I mean, the thing is, is NVIDIA is making so much money in other markets, even outside of just gaming, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, uh, this almost feels like, why would they bother at that point? But, you know, they're all, they also have so much uh, money, I guess you could say, that I could see them at some point maybe getting more involved in this console stuff again. It's difficult to say for sure. I mean, I'd be curious to know how well the Switch did for them financially, what kind of deal they had with Nintendo there. I mean, as far as I understand it, I assume that they just wanted to shift some Tegra, right? Because they made this thing, they, they released products with the Tegra X1. I don't think they were very successful. Is that fair to say, Rich? Uh, the shield stuff it, it, cert it certainly wasn't a mainstream proposition it wasn't a, you know a mass market console by any stretch of the imagination was it no really? so th this basically turned the tegra x1 into like a very big product i assume assuming well, that they, their their deal with nintendo was good if they've shipped 120 million um <laughs> switches that's 120 million tegra x1 that's which is uh, astonishing right? right so you know i i wonder uh each company has had their go around with Nvidia, right? Like Microsoft did with the Xbox. Then <laughs> and they PS3. don't go back. They don't go back. So that makes you wonder. Like, it looks like uh, Nintendo might be. For Nintendo Switch might too. be because I I suspect Nintendo plays hardball with their suppliers in a way that even Nvidia maybe you know it's like you take it or you don't, right? And I assume yeah. it's something like that. Whereas I feel like Xbox and PS3, the, those respective companies got somewhat fleeced at the time. You know, I think yeah. I think it was a real price issue for Microsoft on the original Xbox with the and then for the PS3, obviously. NVIDIA was in a power power position because Sony basically came <laughs> to them in need. Like, uh, our Toshiba GPU idea thing didn't work out. Can you save us? And they're like, Yeah, here's some PC scraps for you. Let's call it uh RSX. And <laughs> it's a reality and, synthesizer, John. So it didn't go well for them. I can see why they moved away from them. I don't know though. Maybe they'll come back because right now, I mean, fundamentally, I think Nvidia's hardware is for gaming. Nvidia is kind of in the lead, right? Like they mm -hmm. have technologies that these consoles would presumably want. Like imagine how powerful something like DLSS or DLSS three would be in a game console. That that would be yeah. That would be such a game changer. Like, and I use I I, I don't use those words often, but in this case, it would truly be a game changer for performance and visual quality, not to mention, you know, potential for increased ray tracing capabilities, right? Because their solution is so much more robust than what AMD has. So like if one of these companies actually did say, you know what, we're going back to NVIDIA, let's work something out. And they were able to release the next console on NVIDIA hardware. I think they'd have a tremendous technological advantage over anything that AMD could build. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, I think the, uh, the reason why they checked out isn't, through you know the fact that they don't want to have their cheaper using consoles it's basically i mean the story goes that they couldn't cost reduce the original xbox because um nvidia didn't want to shift on prices i think that's the kind of perceived uh, wisdom and you're right john on the uh, playstation 3 side of things um sony needed a, a gpu nvidia provided one and for whatever reason after that they switched to amd and um, I think Sony are quite happy with that particular switch. Uh, the the switch to AMD has has been, you know, it turned things around for PlayStation, right? Yeah, it's been, I mean, I don't want to knock AMD here. They successful. they've done really good work on the back end mm -hmm. overall, I would say, because they have to hit that that power profile and that cost profile, like hitting all that stuff and still making a compelling product. That's difficult, and they they yeah. have done well there. Well, yeah, I think there are compelling reasons for. Um, either Microsoft or Sony to go back to uh, to NVIDIA now. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's because, you know, the cost of transistors, right? The actual ability to make a generational leap is really, really difficult now. And NVIDIA, you know, basically their whole strategy from, from you know, Turing onwards, you know, with DLSS has basically been, it's not about pixel pushing anymore. It's about, you know, the, the quality of those pixels and you know DLSS has basically enabled much lower um, uh -huh. uh, power cards to be capable of delivering like 4K gaming. You know the 4060 set it to console specs and you know it's 
fairly decent at 4K gaming, which is which is quite phenomenal when you think about it. DLSS3, I mean, the potential there for at least for 120 hertz support on a console is is mouth watering, I'd say. It's, it's just not possible with any other technology at the moment. And, mm. you know, uh, area efficiency, they're, they're incredibly good at that. Power efficiency, they're incredibly good at that. Best in class. So, yeah. And there's another thing which I think is something worth um, worth sort of figuring out and, and factoring in is that, you know, the innovations in the PC space primarily being driven by NVIDIA, right? You know, raid facing, uh, DLSS, frame generation, it's all coming from NVIDIA. So, you know, if you can actually have a console that integrates those features and the features to come, oh, yeah. this is, this is pre pretty compelling. So I wouldn't be surprised if something changes going forward simply by virtue of necessity, the ability to create a generational leap in a console now and still make it affordable is um, yeah. is 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 challenging to say the least and at the same time we've got cyberpunk running uh path traced on a 300 dollar 4060 yeah i will say they're thinking of efficiency <clears throat> i don't think they'd ever do it it doesn't make sense for them but getting apple silicon in a game console would also be interesting because their chips are quite potent and extremely efficient mm -hmm. so yeah Those but, SOCs. yeah yeah i mean i you know apple they have zero reason to partner with one of these companies. <laughs> so one thing I've Absolutely. thought about before regarding this, it, it partially plays into NVIDIA not being in the consoles is that for a long time, uh, due to, I think kind of due to the console's existence that um, and AMD was uh, happy to s keep their ISA the exact same with GCN existing for oh, an yeah. eternity. And I think uh, since uh, NVIDIA didn't have to care about maintaining this backwards compatibility for so long or forwards compatibility to maintain a certain performance profile uh, that they could just innovate on a, at a more rapid pace, regardless of their budget being much higher for R&D, because they could just leave their previous architectures in the dust and it really didn't matter because they were just PC only at that point in time, just drop driver support after a certain amount of time. So I think... Um, I think actually, oddly enough, for a while, maybe NVIDIA could have benefited from not having to maintain a similar architecture over time.